Good evening. Joey Logano led 199 out of 200 laps tonight at North Wilkesboro. But nobody cares because Ricky Stenhouse Jr. punched Kyle Busch in the face. In the face! All right. Obviously, as you guys know, this is like the third week we busted this hat out. Last week it was Busher and Reddick. Two weeks ago it was Lane Riggs and Cam Waters. Well, this was the most physical out of the three. The the Waters Riggs thing never got physical. Busher did get a shove in. Busher got a shove in. I was there. I still consider that a fight, but it was a very low end fight. This was a freaking brawl. <laughs> okay, so here's what happened. Kyle Busch and Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on lap one of this race went three wide that resulted in Kyle Busch hitting the wall. Stenhouse didn't really touch him. If he did, it was minimum contact. But Kyle Busch hit the wall pretty hard, and he was pissed off about it, to say the least. So coming back around into turn one on lap two, Kyle Busch obliterated Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and ended his night. And Ricky Stenhouse Jr., as the initial retaliation the initial message of hey you suck he parked in Kyle Busch's pit box which you know that seems to be a thing went up to the number eight pit crew Randall Burnett Andy Petrie and said hey man that's just what Kyle would have done and then said something else so then Stenhouse you know there's no tunnels at North Wilkesboro so Ricky Stenhouse Jr. has to stay inside the racetrack he has two hours to sit in the infield and plan his revenge in a sense he punched Kyle Busch in the face if I have not mentioned that so yes it looked like they were having a nice civil conversation you know a little bit like you know anger in terms of the words in terms of the tone like ah, rah, 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 that kind of thing but then all of a sudden like Ricky Stenhouse Jr. says you go watch the replay because Kyle Busch is telling him to watch the replay saying that they touched Stenhouse said no we didn't touch until you bounced off the wall and hit me like, that's when we touched, after you hit the wall. And so Kyle Busch kept on saying, you go watch the replay. And then Ricky said, you go watch the replay. And then, boop, punched him in the face. And then a brawl breaks out. Team members are fighting. This is right in front of the hauler. So you got 47 guys, uh, the 47 crew trying to attack Kyle Busch, which is a big no-no, by the way. Uh, crew members are not allowed to go after the drivers. You got someone dragging Kyle Busch away. Kyle Busch is trying to fight back. He threw a punch back in return. It was chaos, but it was epic. I love NASCAR fights. If I've never mentioned that before on this channel, I have like a million times. I love NASCAR fights. Yes, it was the all-star race. The race itself, mm, meh. Uh, but there was a fight. I've watched like every angle. It's been like 30 minutes since the race has ended. I've watched every angle of it. Uh, the close-ups, the faraways, the TV camera. It punched him so hard that the TV camera started to go out. It started to get all blurry and... The antenna broke. I don't know if that's actually why, but we had another NASCAR fight tonight, ladies and gentlemen. What a season in 2024. Even when we don't get a great race, we get a fight. <laughs> uh, seriously, though, I'm so pumped up. Like when when Sten they showed Stenhouse and Kyle Busch talking, Stenhouse is in his street clothes, and I was like, okay, they're talking. Now, Ricky, do something. I want to see. Oh, oh, he, he punched him in the face. Okay, but yes, let's get on to the race now because I know. Some people care about that, but we really just came here to talk about Kyle Busch getting punched in the face by Ricky Stenhouse Jr. So Joey Logano won. Uh, it's his second ever all-star race win. He led 199 out of 200 laps. That's the most laps ever led in a single all-star race. It is not the highest percentage, though. I think if I read somewhere earlier, Davey Allison led all 70 laps in one of the all-star races back in the day. Uh, but yes, Logano dominated, had the pole for this thing. What a weekend in North Wilkesboro, just from beginning to end, the track literally flooded. Well, the pit road and garage literally flooded. They got four inches of rain in over two hours. Tires were floating away. The trucks were getting flooded almost. Pit crew and garage members were swimming in the rain. That was the most chaotic race weekend start we could have possibly had. Kyle Larson... Is coming from Indianapolis to North Wilkesboro. Everyone's watching his helicopter come in. And then after the race, the race itself, it had like a few moments of intensity. You know, Logano and Bell had a great fight for the lead, made a little bit of contact, classic short track stuff, and Denny Hamlin was able to get into that battle. But other than that, um, no big moments other than what we've already talked about with Stenhouse and Bush. We had different tires, different compounds. It was supposed to be like a soft versus a hard tire. They had weird names for it, like 
Prime and Option. I can't remember which is which. I just know one was soft. The red was soft. The the yellow was hard. It's like F1 where the yellow is medium, red is soft. Um, but there was no real significant fall off from the soft compared to the medium. So ultimately there was no big tire fall off. And ultimately, could temperature have played a factor? Could just... I don't know because the tires were falling off in practice. When they had practice in the middle of the day in the sunshine on this repave, remember this track was repaved over the off season, there was significant fall off. But then we get to the nighttime in the race and not a lot of fall off. I mean, really no fall off. So ultimately that was frustrating. But, you know, the short track package has struggled in the next-gen era. We could talk about that again. We've talked about it every single short track race. I'm tired of talking about it. But the only options are tires or horsepower, and they're trying tires, but they didn't go aggressive enough. Um, Bristol was the only time we really saw it. But uh, Joey Logano, as I said, uh, dominated this race. He led 199 at 200 laps. My lord, he demolished the field. He has not won a points race since Atlanta last spring. Um, so this is his first all-star race win since 2016. So Joey Logano, Team Penske, they have been struggling this year. Even Blaney, I think he's like ninth or 10th in the point standings, which is you know still good, still respectable. But for Team Penske standards, that's not up to their normal standards. They're usually top five in points, have won a race or two at this point, maybe multiple, more than two, whatever the saying is. So they have struggled this year. And for them to finally get a win, regardless if it's a points race or not, has got to be satisfying for that team. They've had a big weekend so far, one, two, three, front row at the Indy 500, and now winning a million dollars with Joey Logano at the All-Star Race. What's he going to spend that million dollars on? I do not know. It's 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 a it's a valid question, but I don't know. Uh, but a million dollars more in Joey Logano's bank. This does not get him into the playoffs. He does not get bonus points, but it's a nice little momentum booster, nice confidence booster for a guy who has not won in over a year. I know he's a two-time champion. I know Penske is still a top-tier team, but the fact of the matter is they've been struggling. They desperately needed to win any way they could get get it. And today, they finally got that win. Denny Hamlin finished his second. He's been insane on the short tracks this year. Wins at Richmond, Bristol, the LA Coliseum. Um, he ran well at Martinsville, led a bunch of laps there. I'm trying to think. Phoenix, he led a bunch of laps. So he's done extremely well at the short tracks this year. No shock to see him up there. But ultimately, you don't get anything for second in the All-Star Race. Chris Buescher continues his hot streak, finishes third. Kyle Larson, what a day for him. Uh, starts the day off in Indianapolis for the Fast 12. Advances to the Fast 6. Qualifies for the uh, Indianapolis 500. Qualifies, starts fifth in that race. And uh, yeah, and then he has to fly to North Wilkesville. They delayed the start like 15 minutes for him, even though he got there plenty of time in advance. Uh, but Larson, what a day from Indianapolis to North Wilkesboro. Two completely different cars. Two extremely competitive <laughs> results. But ultimately, this one does not get you a lot in the All-Star Race. Next week, though, that's a big one. He's got the double coming up. So get yourself some sleep, Kyle Larson. Fifth place, Ryan Blaney. He was up front all day. Good for him. Sixth place, Bubba Wallace. Raced his way in in the All-Star Open. Uh, seventh place, Ross Chastain. Eighth place, Chase Elliott. Ninth place, Michael McDowell. Tenth place, Kyle Busch. Was a wrecking ball today. Um, well, he got put in the fence, or that's how he views it. He, I think he just washed up the track. Yes, Stenhouse was aggressive on lap one, but it was nothing egregious. He didn't force his way in. There was a giant gap, and he went for it. Like I personally don't think Stenhouse did anything wrong on track. Uh, Kyle Busch views it differently, and he obliterated Ricky Stenhouse Jr., as I said earlier. Well, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. obliterated his face later on, so do we consider that even? Do we? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, then he wrecked Ty Gibbs at one point, but he took responsibility for that one. Uh, 11th place, Noah Gregson. He was the fan vote, the only SHR car in the show. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., Ty Gibbs, uh, won the All-Star Open. Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez, Brad Keselowski, Christopher Bell. I think he led the only other lap. AJ Allmendinger, William Byron. 
Yeah, uh, he just smacked the wall, broke a toe link, finishes 14 laps down, and then Ricky Stenhouse Jr. finishes 198 laps down <laughs> because he got wrecked by Kyle Busch, but he got his revenge when he... I think I missed the camera, but you guys get the point. As my Wi-Fi dies, I'm trying to figure out, because they, they did a second Stenhouse interview, and Stenhouse was like, you know, Jamie Little asked him, like, hey... Has this built up or was this just from today, like where you punched him in the face? And he said, well, you know, obviously today's incident, blah, blah, blah. But then he said, you know, looking back at that race at Daytona in 2017 or 2016, whenever it was, Kyle talked a lot of crap about how Stenhouse race. They've had a couple of run-ins and whatnot and, you know, just built up anger. And then finally today happened and he got his opportunity. He's standing right there now, boom, in the face. So, um. Uh, Safe to say he was crabby today. All right, guys, there, there is another angle of this fight. I've watched like 10, 000, this thing 10,000 times. So Kyle Busch like grabbed after the fight, after the initial punch. And um, well, someone else starts grabbing Kyle Busch like to try to fight him. And then Kyle Busch punches him in the face. Apparently, that's Ricky Stenhouse's dad, I think, if I read that correctly. But yeah, Jeff Gluck said that that is Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s dad and... Uh, Look, when drivers get involved in things and they start fighting each other and whatnot, that's cool. That's fine. Let them have at it until, like, it gets too absurd, then separate them. But when crew members, parents, people who aren't drivers get involved, that's when suspensions, hard cards get pulled and all of that. So, uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr.'s dad may not be going to some races for a while, if that is indeed his dad, but... Oh, I love NASCAR fights. I love them so much. I love when people get punched in the face. Respectfully. I mean that respectfully. As, no, as long as no one gets hurt. As long as it's just a little stinger, we're, we're good. Um, but anyways, what a freaking crazy turn of events. Uh, from a Matt all-star race to an absolute brawl after the race. So uh, thanks for watching this video. Crazy late night race recap. But we got a fight in it. So that was cool. Uh, hopefully my internet works and this gets up at a decent hour.